There's a tricky question in the textbook where we've got a cube inside a sphere. A cube of side length L sits inside a sphere of radius R so that the vertices or corners of the cube sit on the sphere. Find the ratio R to L. Really the hardest part about this is envisaging how the cube fits into the sphere. And it's quite tricky. If we picture a sphere, the longest picture a sphere, the longest dimension of a straight line that can fit anywhere inside it must be its diameter. So two times its radius. You then have to work out, well, what is the longest dimension of a cube? And it is, of course, its corners, bottom left to top right. So the longest diagonal of a sphere, sorry, longest diagonal of a cube that fits inside a sphere is going to be the sphere's diameter. So if I drew in the sphere's diameter, because anywhere from outside to outside, passing through the center is the diameter then that's the longest dimension of the cube. So we could then sketch the cube in very badly. Uh, should have come down to here. Ah, really dodgy sketching here, sorry all the way down to there. So if we've sketched the cube in, its diagonal, bottom left to top right, is the diameter. And that's the thing we need. Now when we get stuck on questions like this, once we've worked out that the diameter of the cube is the, is the sorry, diameter of the sphere is the diagonal of the cube, probably a good idea to draw yourself just a cube because otherwise life is going to just feel too tricky. So here's my nice 3D drawing of a cube adding in the sides that I can't see. And what I want, or what I know is the diameter, is that dimension there. That is D, the diameter of the sphere. I want to find the relationship between the radius, so that's two times the radius there, and the length of the sides. So this is L, this is L, this is L. To do that, I've got to find the diameter in terms of L, that is, use the fact that this side is L and this side is L and this side is L to use Pythagoras twice to get this, not as D, but as however we find it with L. So our first triangle is across the base here because then I'll have this measurement, and this measurement, and I can find the diameter in terms of L. If we get stuck, redraw the triangle. So I'm starting with this bottom triangle, L by L. And I'm finding this side, which I'll call X. So, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. x squared is l squared plus l squared. So, x squared is 2l squared. That will mean that x is the square root of 2l squared. Now I could do I could simplify this, but I'm not going to. 
Now I've got that dimension along there, so I can draw this triangle. So I know I've got L up the side, and I just found this bottom dimension. It's the square root of 2L squared. And I want to find this side. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. X squared, we could have called it Y. Now this is L squared plus I've got the square root of 2L squared squared. And the reason I didn't simplify that down is because I knew I'd have to square it again. And squaring a square root just ditches the square root. So that's x squared is L squared plus 2L squared. Sorry about the bell there. That means x squared, L squared plus 2L squared is 3L squared. And so x is the square root of 3L squared. Now before, you'll see I said I'm not going to simplify that anymore, but I am going to simplify that. I'm going to use the rule that says the square root of a product is equal to the square root of um, one of the terms times the square root of the other term. So that means, I'm just going to do this in a different color here because it's not really a necessary line. This square root of 3 times L squared can be written as the square root of 3 times the square root of L squared. And if I do the square root of something squared, the square root and the squared cancel out. So I've got x is root 3 times L. Now x is also d, the diameter. Oops, d, the diameter. And the diameter is 2 times the radius. So x equals 2 times the radius. So 2 times the radius equals root 3 times the length of the square. We wanted to get the ratio of r to l, the radius of the sphere to the length of the cube. That means r to l is root 3 to 2. Now, if it's not really clear to you why it seems like those two have been swapped around, if that's clear, if, you, if you're good, you've got the answer, great, move on. But if you're going, wait a minute, shouldn't it be 2 to root 3? Sometimes when you hit a ratio question and there's something scary like a square root and it doesn't really, you can't really see which is bigger, write yourself a simpler ratio question and work out how that would work. So, just moving over here, if I had a rectangle, can we see that? Yep, good. That was x by y, and I wanted the ratio of x to y, and x is 1, and y is 3, and I drew it really clearly going, look, y is bigger than x, right? then the relationship would be that 3x equals 1y. Can you see the similarity to what I've got here? 2r equals root 3l, 3x equals 1y. And it's very clear that y is three times as big as x. So when you wanted the ratio of x to y, We've quite clearly got 1 to 3, 
And in this relationship here, you can see that 3x equals 1y gives you an x to y ratio of 1 to 3. So 2r equals root 3l gives you an r to l ratio of root 3 to 2. Ratios can be tricky. So in fact, can Pythagoras.